my friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Max. And in this tutorial, we're gonna make this beautiful summer poncho. Now, I'm gonna right off the hop say that um, we have a member um, in my Facebook group, group Koala Knits and Max. Um, her name is Jan, and the other day she posted this summer poncho. And uh, I, I just, I messaged her and I said, Jan, can I do a tutorial on that? Because it's so beautiful. Um, so this is inspired by Jan and that's why I'm calling it Jan's Summer Poncho. Okay, um, this is the short one. She uh, makes her short ones 150 rows and that's exactly what this one is. And uh, then I'm gonna show you one that I made that's um, 180 rows. Um, for, the 100, for, the, for the longer one, Jan makes hers 200 rows. Um, but I used, not this color, this is a different color <laughs> in the big one, but I don't have um, a ball left of the other one to show you, but um, I used three of these for the longer one, okay, um, and I only got 180 rows, so for me, I did 180 rows, and you'll see in my five foot three stature, that 180 rows was the perfect amount, so um, you can you can weigh it out from there and see, like, you can scale it out by looking at that one and see if you need it longer or not. Jan does 200 rows, okay, and uh, these little balls are 1.5 ounces or 42.5 grams for those of you who need to know that and uh and i needed two and maybe a quarter balls for this one okay that's all you need very very little for this because it's a flat panel it doesn't take much yarn <laughs> okay so i used about um two and a, maybe a quarter for this one um you can get about 60 rows out of one ball of handicraft or cotton yarn so that's there you go um depending on how many rows you need that's what you need one ball for 55 to 60 rows um and then for the longer one um i used like i said all three balls okay so um i absolutely love this like i've got it paired with jeans and it looks um, it looks great but you can put it with a, like a sundress put it with um dress pants a skirt anything really like it's so versatile um and so thank you so much jen for the inspiration um we have such an inspiring um call and it's in that facebook group you're gonna want to be a part of it so come on over and join us um there but thank you so much for this uh inspiration and for giving me permission to make a tutorial on it i really 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 love it um and i hope you do too <laughs> you do okay i heard you say you did <laughs> all right so um, once you have your supplies ready, I used my Addy 46 needle machine for this. If you don't have a 46 needle and you only have your center 48, that will do. You can do this as well. Okay, um, pay particular attention to um, how I joined the longer one because um, you don't um, you don't join it all the way to the to the. Oh, I shouldn't get into that right now, should I? No, I'll tell you a little bit later into the video. Okay, so you just get your supplies and join me. And at the end, I'll tell you what the difference is that you have to do with the other one, okay? <laughs> okay, but before we get started, <laughs> I'm going to show you that other poncho. But I also wanted to tell you that the color of the other pon of this poncho, it's like a, like a, a denim blue, variegated blue kind of color. And I'll tell you, I had a big ball of it and I got lots still left i had those giant balls that you can buy um and i don't have the sleeve for it so i'm not sure what color it is but it's like a variegated denim kind of blue kind of color but of course you're going to use whatever color that you want and then for that other one that i used uh or that i made um the color is called summer song like isn't that just like so great <laughs> summer song and this is old i got like um three of these balls plus one solid color that goes with it um, from the second hand store for four bucks for all four balls um, and so yeah, I don't think you can even get this color anymore so you'll have to look but summer song but you choose whatever colors that you love the most because um, Ber uh, Bernat Handicraft or Cotton Yarn comes in so many different color color shades um, I think like uh, that variegated yellow one would be absolutely gorgeous for summer uh, so anyways you choose whatever yarn you want and make sure you show us in my facebook group because i can't wait to to see what you make but um i'm going to show you the long one and then we'll get get into making okay all right so here's the long one this one um i did 180 rows now jan in our facebook group um a subscriber to my channel also uh she she does 200 rows for her long ones, but I had three of those small Bernat Handicrafter um, yarn balls in this color and <laughs> it was quickly running out. So I only made it to row 180 um, with giving me a little bit extra uh, that I could use for sewing. Um, but I'm actually glad because it's the perfect length for me. I'm 5'3", and if I would have uh, done it any longer, if I would have done 200 rows, it would have 
been way, way too long for me. So um, use that as your guide uh, for how long that you want to do yours. So I'm loving it. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. There's the back. And there's the front. So if you um, watch this video and you enjoyed it, please hit that like button because that's how YouTube uh, passes my video around when they when they know that people are actually liking it so um if you wouldn't mind doing that i would appreciate that very much um and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and come on over and join my facebook group koala knits and knacks we have a wonderful group of crafters over there and i'd love to have you as a part of that then you can show us um your makes the things that you make and if you make one of these beautiful um ponchos sour ponchos you can show us in the group so thanks again for watching my friends take care and have a great day Okay, so are you ready? <laughs> we are going to make Jan's summer poncho. I love it. She posted in our Facebook group and uh, I was um, in love with it right away. And I asked her if she minded if I would do a tutorial on it and give her the credit for it. So Jan, this is um, thanks to you. Okay, so we're going to make sure that our um, needles are on, on the white section and we're gonna flip it up to flat panel. Then we're gonna come back and it won't let us go past those black needles. We're going to go forward till we get to our first white needle and we are going to cast on with waste yarn, okay? So you're gonna go behind that first white, in front, behind, and in front, all the way around. Because we are knitting in flat panel, our 46 needle machine will only let us knit 43 needles because we need the three black turning ne needles for turning, okay? Um, which is okay. So there I'm under that last white needle. I'm gonna go, cause the next one is black. I'm gonna go under that divider that's beside it to the left of it. I'm gonna open that feeder. Oops, oops, get stuck on that black um, needle. And I'm going to pop it in there, shut the feeder. And then I'm gonna turn it so it goes back again all the way to the black, to the third black one, till it won't let go anymore. My nails, <laughs> this is embarrassing, my nails are dirty. I was just outside um, cleaning the yard and I, I guess I didn't wash them. my nails good enough. So pardon me for the next part of the video, they will be better. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go back and we are going to knit our waist yarn. Okay, making sure that last one catches it and you'll watch it pop over that divider and then you're going to go till you can't go anymore then you're going to go the other direction it's going to go over that divider you're going to make sure that that um that, that loop is over the red teeth okay the first the first and the last needle don't have anything on the side of it to help the tension so you got to keep an eye on them to make sure that that loop goes down over the red teeth before the needle picks it up and the working yarn up and takes it down under okay so here we go Go to the other side. See, I'm going to push that down just to make sure. And I'm going to make sure that that goes over that divider. And then I can't go any further. I'm going to pull the back of my working yarn um, a little tighter because then it helps the um, edging be all nice and beautiful. Okay. And we're going to watch as that goes down under. That needle picks it up. And we're going to keep going back. Then you can loosen your tension a little bit after that first and the last needle is done. Okay. I'm going to do an even number of waist yarn rows so that you end up back with your black needles on this side before we, we switch yarn colors. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do a few more rows, okay? I am actually using Bernat Premium yarn for my waist yarn in white um, because my machine loves Bernat Premium and so will yours. And here we go, all the way back. Flat panels are so fun. Don't be scared of flat panels. See, we have to always watch that it goes down underneath and move it all the way over before we go back. And then it's gonna go over and pop down under and then give it a little snug so that your, um, oops, so that your edging is all nice and beautiful. Not that it matters for waste yarn, but it's a good practice for um, the rest of the project. Okay, I'm gonna do two more after this. I like to have a good amount of waste yarn just so I am secure with my project. Now at the beginning of the project, um, your, your waste yarn doesn't come undone um, very easily. So fewer rows will be okay. But at the end, you wanna make sure you do a fair amount. You're hearing that handle because, um, because I'm putting some tension on it and I'm tightening the, uh, 
Oops, that one's gonna snag. There we go. And it's working too hard to turn, so that's why. So I'm gonna go back. I'm going to change my row counter to zero. Okay, we're going to then continue going back as far as it'll let us go. Then I'm going to cut my waste yarn. I am going to use 100% Bernat Cotton Handicrafter um, yarn for this project. And it's, it's going to be in a variegated um, denim, which I think is going to be absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to see the results. I haven't made one yet, so I'm making this for the first time with you, if I can untangle everything there. Okay, so we're going to open our feeder. We're going to um, put it into our feeder. We're going to hold both of those ends. I always just for good practice, put it underneath that little divider so that it follows the same kind of um, action that the rest does, okay? Not that it really matters, but it just, in my head, it just makes a difference, okay? So I'm going to do three or four needles, then I'm gonna take my working yarn on both ends, and I'm gonna pull it so that my stitches are even here with the, um, the even tension, the same tension that's gonna be for the rest of the project, okay? Now I'm gonna keep going back and forth with cotton yarn you want to go slower okay and you want to have an even tension not a loose tension not a tight tension i'm holding it between my finger and my thumb here and i'm i'm just pressing ever so slightly okay i'm gonna watch to make sure it goes down over that divider and then i can't go any further and then it's coming back making sure that loop is down over the red teeth before that needle picks it up it's gonna go down and I'm going to go back, not having a tight tension at all, just guiding it, okay? There we go. Okay, oops. I'm gonna watch every needle because yarn can be a little bit funny I mean cotton yarn can be a little bit funny but the outcome is beautiful just make sure that you have some slack from your ball because if it's tight coming out of your ball you're going to have a bit of a problem okay so I'm going to just help with these first few rows there we go pops down under there I'm going to loosen it from my ball always make sure that that's uh it's not struggling to get it out of the ball okay and then we're gonna go back the other way. And then I'm gonna go back. This is gonna be like a slower process because I'm using cotton. If you're using acrylic, you're gonna whip through this a lot faster. But um, for me, I think for a summer poncho, I'm, I'm excited about what this cotton is gonna look like in this denim variegated color. Like it's gonna be beautiful. So you keep going, my friends, until you get 150 rows for the smaller poncho or 200 rows for the larger one. And then when you get to that place, see me back and we are going to do the next step, okay? All right, so how's it going? I hope it's going well. It's going pretty good for me. I'm on row, uh, gonna start row 39, um, but I just wanted to show you that it started to touch the table. So I rolled it up and then I bought these little clips from um, the dollar store, of course. Man, I should... <laughs> I should get dibs into that dollar store because I should promote them a lot. And I um, just roll it up and clip them so that I have good tension around the rim of my barrel. And it helps uh, it helps to keep my stitches even and to, um, to not tuck. So that's uh, what you're going to do once it starts to get slack on it by touching the table. Okay, so I just thought that I would pop on, show you that, and then I'll continue on.
you might be watching me and I'm purposely left it on and say, boy, she's got to go slow, <laughs> but because it's cotton. Okay. And yes, you do have to go a bit slower, but it's worth it. My friends, um, not every project has to be done in a whirlwind. Um, and if you want the results, um, from cotton, you have to take your time. You have to baby it. You have to give it the attention <laughs> that it needs. Okay. So it's working out beautifully for me. I haven't tucked one stitch yet. Um, and that's because I'm going at an even pace, but I haven't been doing it for too long at all. And I'm already on row 42. So here you go. Keep going, my friends. Be encouraged. It's going to be over soon. <laughs> See you when you get to row 150 or if you're doing the larger one, 200. you how I did the clips um it was too much to to gather it all up so as I kept going I would just um pinch a little bit lower than than the top and I would just add my clips and that added all the weight that I needed okay so now we're going to add the waist yarn I'm gonna move that back up and so I'm going to cut my working yarn leaving a bit of a tail don't need too big of a tail too long of a tail I'm gonna back it up I'm gonna drop that in the center. Make sure that that loop is over the teeth. There were two little red teeth. I'm gonna put this into my yarn feeder in between the last white and the, or pardon me, the last black and the first white. It's usually the opposite. <laughs> and then we're going to hold this underneath. I Like I said before, I always like to just mimic how, it's, how it actually would be, okay? So I hold that underneath so that needle can pick it up, put it down, through that loop and then we'll continue on okay making sure that it's going to pick up every stitch and take it down through those red teeth once that loop is down over the red teeth okay i only have to guide it the first row okay and then we're going to come back the other direction and i'm going to do eight rows of waist yarn, okay? Oop, that one's split, but that's okay. It's just waist yarn, so I'm gonna let it go. Sometimes to keep your yarn from splitting, you wanna put a little bit more tension on it, and then it'll hold those fibers together as the needle picks it up. I just wanna make sure that that, yep, there's still part of the stitch on there, so it's not gonna drop my row, so we're good. If that would have been my working yarn, I would have stopped and, and fixed it. But being that it's waist yarn, it's not, it's not a big deal, okay? Okay? So there we go. Make sure that picks it up. I'm going to go back. Okay. And I'm going to go back um, a few more times until I have eight rows of waist yarn and I'm back at the beginning here. So go ahead and do that. Do as many rows of waist yarn as you're comfortable with and then I'll see you back. All right, so I'm back at the start. I'm gonna remove my clips. I don't need those on there anymore. Put those aside. I'm going to cut off the end of my waist yarn. Okay, open the latch, close it then so I don't nick it with my needle, feed it back. And then I'm just going to go one direction and then back the other direction and it will let go okay just like so okay so now we have our long beautiful piece let me just see if I can show you in the it's gorgeous so yes you can do cotton and cotton looks great that would be oh it's just so nice okay I can't wait to drop those uh, stitches and and show you what this is gonna look like so um, I'm gonna get my machine out of the way go grab your um, crochet hook now it doesn't um, really matter what size you use to close the ends but um, I always use for this purpose a 4.5 millimeter hook so go ahead and grab your hook of choice get your machine out of the way and then see me back and we'll go into the next part all right, so you're going to grab yourself four stitch markers for me. That's bobby pins. And you're going to, we're going to identify the first and the last stitch, okay, on, on each row. Now, this is the end of the project, and you know which is the end because it comes apart really easily. It unravels really easily. Grab that side um, so you can see the same stitches stitch that I have, okay? You're going to pick up on that waist yarn 
and that little loose loop <laughs> that's that it's coming under is going to be your first stitch okay so if you pull on your on your um this is too long if you pull on your your working yarn as well that's what this loop is okay right there so that's number one you're going to put your that's number one you're going to put your stitch marker in there okay then we're going to count down the row two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the way till 43 okay so keep counting till you get to 43 and i'll see you there <laughs> okay so i'm back with you and i'm going to enlarge this This is 42 right here, and you're going to say, okay, where's the next one? It's way up there, that little loop that's way up there. That is 43. Now, the reason why we want to identify these is because we gotta, we're got we going to make sure that we um, identify them on the other side too so that we have the same rows that are dropped. Okay, so when, when we're closing this off, we're going to miss. I don't have to have that so large, you know. <laughs> We're going to miss every third every third row, um, and we want it to match up at the bottom. So now let's turn it around to the other side. Okay, so when you got the other side, you've got your tails on your right. Now this one's easy to identify. Um, because here's your, your working yarn right here. Then you've got your little tail here, okay, of waste yarn. That tail comes around. It's underneath here, and this is this is the the this is part of the tail here and where it's coming out of this loop right here is where you're going to put your stitch marker okay so right to the left of this that first loop but also when you pull on your waist yarn it's the it's the last loop that it's coming out of that's where you're going to put and then count back 43 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the way to 43 and then i'll see you at the other end all right so here's where it's tricky again this is 42 right there you've got to find where that last white loop is and pick up on this stitch right here this is where you're going to put your 43 that's what we're going to count as 43 or you can even do it on the other side of that of that uh, loop makes more sense right there 43 so that's why it's important to count because um, then we can identify all 43 otherwise um, once we're if we just do it blindly we're going to miss one of those stitches Okay, now that we have them both marked, we're going to go ahead and start seaming closed. You're going to need to grab um, your ball of yarn again because we need to have a, a, a end from, the, from um, that ball that we're going to use um, to crochet across here. So go ahead, get your ball of yarn. <laughs> okay, I've got my yarn. I don't know why that was so hard to articulate. Maybe because I've had a busy day and I'm tired. But doesn't this look beautiful? This is the right side. Do you know... I'm going to make a sweater out of cotton. I think I'm going to make a sweater out of cotton because this just, <laughs> it's just so gorgeous. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so the right side is facing. We're going to grab whatever side that you have first. Okay, but I'm going to take this side first. This is, um, this is the beginning of the project. Okay, I can go ahead and take that out. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here for you. I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook, on my crochet hook, okay? And from there, we are going to, we're going to um, grab our one side. Okay, this one is, a, this side is, is the beginning of our project because this is one where you can't unravel it easily, okay? And I'm going to, with the right side facing up, facing you, I'm going to go to that very end bobby pin. Ugh, come on. And I'm going to put my hook under that stitch. Then I can take out this, this bobby pin. Okay. So then I have two loops on my hook. I have the, the slip knot and I have the stitch. Okay. So I'm going to yarn over and pull it through both of those loops. Then into that next stitch, which is hiding down under there. It got a little bit tight because um, I was pulling on the first one. You're going to put your hook underneath that next stitch. Come on. And if you have to take your bobby pin to loosen that one, do that because it's just tightened up because of, of the tension we had on the first stitch. Okay, and you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to put your hook under that stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull it through that stitch and through the next one. The one that was on your hook. That's a slip stitch. That's our second stitch. Now we're going to miss every third one. So we're going to miss this one in order to jump across to this fourth one. We have to chain one. 
Okay, so chain one, I'm gonna miss this third one, I'm gonna jump across to this one, and I'm gonna count it as one, okay? Because every third one I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna slip stitch. That's one. Into that next one, yarn over, slip stitch. That's two. I'm going to miss the third one, so I'm gonna chain one so that I have the space on my hook to move over to this next one. I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna miss that, I'm gonna slip stitch into that next one. I'm gonna count that as one. Next one, two. We're gonna miss three, so we're gonna chain one. Then the next one, slip stitch, one. Slip stitch in the second one, two. We're gonna miss three, so we have to chain one. Miss three, then go into this next one, one, two, chain one, miss one, one, two, chain one, and miss one, one, two, chain one, to miss that third one, one, two, chain one, miss one, one, two, chain one, miss one. You're getting the idea. <laughs> one, two, chain one, miss one. All the way to the end and I'll see you at the end. We're almost there, okay? I'm at the end. And I have only two stitches left, so I'm going to, this would have been the uh, one that I'm missing. So I'm going to go into that next one. And I'm going to slip stitch to join. Take out the stitch marker. Yarn over. Pull it through. Cut it off. And fasten off, okay? So there we go. Now we can take out our, our waist yarn. And by doing to do that, we're going to roll up. We're going to find where our tail is. We've got to unloosen that one stitch there. So you find that knot, you loosen it. There we go. Just like that, you untie it, get it going. Then you can pull it out from the from the very top. Okay, so you got to roll it up until you get the very top row. Pinch the stitch to the left and pull out the row. You can go down a few here. Roll all the way up, pinch that stitch, pull out that very top strand. Then go farther down. The trick is to make sure that you're on the top row, okay? If you're pulling the second row, you're gonna get a knot and then you're gonna have to cut the whole thing off, okay? But if you're careful and you make sure you get the top row, and you can tell because you can see that little loop over top of the strand, that's the stitch. You're gonna pinch it and pull it out. You're gonna do that all the way down. Okay, I always put, I don't know, six or seven or eight, maybe even more <laughs> stitches in between when I know that I've got a good start on it. There we go. And here we go. Let's pull on this one. And we got one more loop to go through and then it'll just unravel okay just like so except for when you get to the end there you got to pull the loop through and you keep going pull it through that loop if it was um, if you did a circular pattern you wouldn't have to pull that through um, but because it's it's a flat panel the way it knits up you have to pull it through that that loop on either end okay just like that and then you keep unwinding it and when you're done that I'll see you back okay take your time and you'll get it no problem and if you're not going to reuse this waist yarn then just cut it off at the end of every row and then you don't have to undo such a long loop here you don't have to pull this long strand out but I'm going to reuse this waist yarn because it's still in really good shape so I'm going to just work at it like this okay all right, so see you when you get that finished, okay? All right, so that's what we got. 
and you can see that these loops are already wanting to start dropping. Um, we started on this end, finished on this end, so I'm going to go around um, to the other side here. And this was the end we started on, so I'm going to work on it from the back this time with the back facing so that I'm going in the same direction. And we're going to essentially, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to start with a slip stitch into that one. We're going to do one, two, chain one, skip one, one, two, chain one, skip one, one, two, chain one, skip one. Okay. Same pattern that we did on the other side. Okay. And once you get that done, um, then we're going to start dropping stitches, which is the most therapeutic part. So I'm going to just recap on this other side. Let me just put this here. This is the side that we started on, okay? This side here. So if I'm going to start on the same side, it's going to be the wrong side facing me, okay? So trail that down and start on the same side going across so that you're you're missing the, you're you're making sure that you're missing the same stitch um, that lines up that, that this dropped row lines up with the um, one that's going to be dropped on this side, okay? So go ahead and do that, and uh, when you're finished that, I will see you back. All right, so the patterning ended up the same exact way. Now I'm going to tie these two ends. Okay, just like that. I'm going to just cut them off a little shorter. I'll hide them. I'll sew them into the seam a little bit later. But now we can just re take off our waist yarn. This side is very easy. Okay, so you're going to just pull it off. This is the dream side, comes off with no problem. Okay, so go ahead and take all your waist yarn off. And once you get to the end of that, see me back. Okay, so we've got that um, all ready to be sewn together. So we've got our big long piece like this. You're going to you're going to imagine that it's, well, we're going to put it inside out, okay? So have your right side facing, okay? Then you're going to take the one end, the one little end, and you're going, it doesn't matter which end, and you're going to have it flat. So let me just, um. this is awkward in the camera, but you're going to take the one end with a flat side like this, okay? So here's here's our flat side. We're going to sew up along the side here with this other end. So we're going to take the other end. So you're going to make sure that it's not twisted, okay? Meaning meaning that this whole loop like it's it's making a circle, but it's going to you're you're not twisting it. You're you're making sure that the the right side is facing up and then you're going to turn this one end so that the wrong side's up. Then you're going to take this other end and you're going to fold it over. Now you've got the wrong side on both ends showing. This is this is the finished end that we just crocheted. We're going to go up the side of that end, the very last row. And this is going to start coming. Some, some of your stitches might start um, dropping already, but you've got this nice finished edge there. And we're going to sew it together. There are many ways that you can do this. And to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure how Jan has done hers, um, but I'm going to sew it. And if you have a better way that you um, would rather do it, then, then you go ahead and do that. Um, but I'm going to just tie off these two ends together, right? And then and there, right here and there, okay? Because then it might just hold it together a little bit, okay? And I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to just have my the, my right sides are together so that I'm sewing on the wrong side and I'm going to very carefully get the very edge there okay and when I've got the edge all rolled up I can turn it just so that it's easier to sew okay really that's why and then I'm going to attach my working yarn leaving an end that uh you know, I will tie off and hide. And we're going to just roll this, fold this up so that you have the very edge. We're going to go into the side here and we're going to go into the stitch on the other side. Okay. And we're going to sew. Then I'm going to come across. This is a, as a long loop here. So I'm going to, to maybe do two stitches to every loop on this side. However, it works out for you. Just, just get it nice and even. And I'm going to pull that tight. I'm going to make sure that this is folded up. There's a knot there for that row. I'm going to make sure I always go into that little knot. 
on my um, bathing suit cover up that we did, then I would go underneath here and, and I would do the, this kind of a stitch, okay? But for this, I don't think I need to. Um, and I'll do that one more time. It doesn't really matter. You can if you want to, but I'll show you what I, what I mean by that. Okay, so I'm gonna go there. It's just to reinforce the stitch a little bit. Then you go underneath the loop. Okay, and then you carry it across and it just makes a nice, a nice seam across the top. You can do that or you can just straight seam it like what I'm doing, just a stitch here. For this project, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to this, this way of doing it, okay? Then I'm gonna come across. There's a knot there. I wanna go into that knot because I think that reinforces it. Okay, go across. And I'm gonna snug that up. Make sure this, this is unrolled so that I have the very edge. Jan, thanks again for showing us uh, this project in my Facebook group, Coal and It's a Nax, um, because it really is a fun project. And, and you know what? I really believe if you make this, you're, you're going to get somewhere out of it. Um, choose a color that goes with your summer wardrobe uh, that, you know, the colors that you like to wear, of course. And, and uh, if you're somebody who wears a lot of denim, this, this is perfect. This, uh, this one from Bernat Handicrafter. So you're going to continue this process all the way up so that this one edge is sewn to the long side, oops, sorry, knocked my camera, of the scarf, just like that, okay? And then once you get that all sewn and tied off, then we can make the magic happen and drop our stitches, okay? So go ahead and finish that, and then I'll see you back when you're done. Okay, so that's what your seam should look like. Beautiful, nice and neat. This is the wrong side. Let's turn it around to the right side. I've got lots of tails that I have to still hide, but... So it's looking a little bit strange now, but it's gonna it's gonna look great. So this this is this is up the side, the lengthwise, okay? Because this is this piece here is the one we folded over and sewed up to the up the long side. So this is the width of the scarf right here, or of the poncho, sorry. Okay, and so now the magic happens. So I've got my my ends all tied off. I'm gonna actually cut them off shorter. I'm gonna hide them later because I can't wait to get out them. <laughs> I can't wait to get out the dropping. Uh, it's like an addiction. Seriously, it's it's so fun. I'm going to cut those off. And those will, will all hide in this little seam right here. And I could do that now, but I'm just waiting to drop these stitches. Okay, so now all we do is we start pulling. Okay. And every third row is going to drop. Oh, love it. Love, 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 love it. Okay? I'm just going to give you an idea. These are these are our rows that are regular rows. <laughs> it's hard to see. And then the dropped ones are in there. Um, but it, it is, like if I stretch that, you'll see the patterning. The two rows that are our um, regular rows. And then the dropped ones that are in between. That make these regular rows stretch out. So, oh, it's just... So nice. So you're gonna take your time and you're gonna start dropping all the way down. Go across. Cotton doesn't drop as easy as, as acrylic does, but it will drop. It has to drop because you've that's you know how you've designed it. But it just will take a little bit more time if you're using cotton. Acrylic you can pull on this, you, you pull on the top and it just unravels all the way <laughs> quite a ways down. But I'm finding with this cotton it's it's I can already see it's a little bit different. So it's gonna take me a little bit of time to do it. But once I get started, you get the tension, so you're gonna pull it widthwise and lengthwise, and then it starts to draw. Oh, no problem, okay. Just like that. And you're gonna do that from one end to the other, and then you'll Keep going till you go all the way the length of your poncho. Okay? I can't wait to uh, have this done and to show you. Can't wait. Like, look at that. I get so excited when something comes together and it looks so beautiful. Like, that's gorgeous. 
I can't wait. Okay, so I'm going to finish and then uh, you'll see the beautiful finished project. Project. Thanks again, Jan. You're you're uh, amazing. Thanks for sharing your um your uh inspirations with us in in the group. It's just uh, great to be able to work together as a community and to you know, create. So, I'm going to continue and uh then I'm going to put it away for the night and I will see you in the morning. <laughs> All right. Good morning, my friends. Well, for some of you, it's probably evening. And you know what? Depending on when you're watching this video, it could be any time of the day. So hello to you. Um, this is what it looks like. And I am so, so in love with this pattern. I think it's just so beautiful. And uh, you've seen pictures of it on me already and, and uh, what it looks like when it's being worn. So um, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now, I'm also going to just show you really quickly this bigger one, okay? Because, and I'll show you that in the pictures in a second, but when you are sewing this one on, you've got to measure your, your um, neck length. Because this one is so much longer, you noticed that in the beginning that, that there was a bit of a tail here um, from the rest of the, of the um, length that because we made it longer. So you want to make sure that you are, are careful with um, when you fold this, this piece over here, this is the edging, when you fold it over that you make sure that you measure the very top of where you start seaming right here, um, that your arm or your, your neck hole here is the size that you want it. Okay. For me, I did 34 inches. So um, uh, from the very corner of this, if you were to undo this, this being the um, edge, I measured 34 inches all the way down and that's where I attached this and then sewed it on and then this is what's what, what's left. Okay, all this, all this down to the bottom there. So that's how you sew this one on. Um, you have to just be careful that you, you make sure that you've measured your neck. That's all. Okay. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you um, make yourself a poncho or make them for gifts. Um, they're just a lovely, lovely item. So thanks again, John, for your inspiration. I really appreciate it. All right, my friends, have a great day.